We all know that gripping the neck or squeezing with the thumb is a big no-no because it causes unnecessary tension and makes playing even more difficult than it already is. This is a concept that is simple but not easy. Pretty much all violinists and violists struggle with some form of this at some point and sometimes without even realizing it, especially if this is an ingrained habit. And for so many of us who mean well and do our best, this problem most often occurs when the music is either emotionally intense or technically demanding usually both at the same time. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.Live helping you along your musical journey. In this video, we're going to go over five ways to train your left hand to feel lighter and less tight. Spending just three minutes on these daily can help improve your stamina, your speed, vibrato, and shifting. Be sure to watch until the end of the video because I will throw in a bonus tip on playing double stops with more ease and maybe a couple more tips. So the first thing we will practice doing is reducing in general our finger pressure and we can do this by practicing an exercise introduced by Simon Fisher in he has it in his book Basics, and he also has an exercise in his book called Warming Up, which I like very much. Uh, basically, what we are looking for is the least amount of finger pressure that will still produce a, a pure tone. And the exercise involves hitting the strings with a lot of energy and immediately releasing the pressure to uh, what would be uh, harmonic pressure. So, for example, I will take the note G on the D string and I will first play the open D and then I'll hit so I hit the string with my third finger with a lot of energy and then immediately after impact I release the finger pressure to a harmonic and then what I will do after that is once I hear the harmonic I'm going to slowly start increasing pressure again little by little until I hear a pure tone again and this will help me kind of identify what's the proper finger pressure that will give me a pure tone but without pressing too hard so I'll start again <laughs> right there. So this is less pressure than the initial impact that I did. So it's almost like a, kind of like a trampoline effect. If you think of a trampoline um, or if you land, like if you jump, we have the impact first and then the body kind of rebounds like a recoil effect. It's very similar because our body is kind of made of springs and including our fingers here. So now what we can do is play a D major scale. Hit and release. Hit and release. Hit and release. For the second exercise, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to put all our fingers down on the fingerboard and we're going to treat that feeling as the default, as the more relaxed state. And we're going to focus on lifting the fingers with energy now. And we're going to use the first exercise from the Dunas Daily Dozen. So we will do this on the easy setting. I'm not going to go through the entire exercise just for the sake of time. I'll use the third finger as an anchor to distribute the weight evenly among the four fingers. And what I'm going to look for is how to uh, find a good balance here and this is kind of the default starting position and I'm going to lift each finger with energy and then the when upon the release after the lift it drops back down slowly so this really helps to prevent pushing down into the fingerboard too hard with the fingers So for the third exercise, very simple. We're going to practice wiggling our thumb. You can do this either in the middle of a scale or in the middle of a phrase. The idea is to keep the thumb mobile. There is no optimal position for the thumb. It's different depending on what you are doing on the instrument. It's also a little different for every individual. 
So as I talked about this in my video on where does the left thumb go, I mentioned that there is no ideal placement. So I cannot tell all of you, hey, this is where you should be putting your left thumb because that's not how it works. So what we're going to do is practice moving it around because what happens is if we press down too hard with our fingers, automatically the thumb will counter it because this is the counter pressure. If one squeezes, one side squeezes, so, so does the other and it kind of amplifies the tension and makes it twice as uh, challenging. So we'll play a D major scale again. <laughs> So I just kind of randomly moved my thumb around or if I'm playing a tune. So you see on the open D there, I wiggled my thumb a little bit. So that's a great place to release. If you have like an open string somewhere or if you have to change positions actually shifting is a great opportunity to release because you actually do have to release the thumb in order to um, go up and down the fingerboard so those are great moments where you can plan to do that in repertoire tip number four is to examine and reconsider the weight distribution um, among your fingers uh, and your hand actually whether that means it's better to bring the wrist a little bit closer uh, without doing this, of course. So sometimes this feels a little bit tight and I just bring my wrist a little closer this way. Just even a centimeter can really help to feel more relaxed, especially with the third and fourth fingers. Whether that means to bring the thumb up, whether it means also um, to balance the weight um, with a first and second finger, let's say if I'm doing a trill between first and second finger, but if I'm doing a trill with a third and fourth finger, I would have to completely transfer the weight this way. So we want to be able to really kind of be able to change the weight distribution according to what we need to do. Ideally, the third finger is a great one to serve as an anchor because it's, first of all, it's one of our weaker fingers, but also, um, it's kind of the finger that will give enough support to the pinky because they do share a tendon, but it's also going to leave the first and second finger not too much, um, not too much handicapped when we do that. Because you see, if I focus on the third and fourth finger, my first and second finger, they kind of have to, my first finger needs to reach back a little bit. So by using the third finger as a guide, it kind of helps all four fingers to be comfortably on top of the string. By the way, if you're getting any value from this video so far, uh, please give me a quick thumbs up down below for the YouTube algorithm so it suggests this video to more people who need this kind of guidance. Okay, so tip number five, this one is less obvious and that's because sometimes tension and pain in our smaller muscles and our smaller ligaments and tendons they result from tension that comes from the larger muscles. This is something we don't really think about too much. I mean, if you think about it, uh, I'll put my instrument down for a second. When we wiggle our fingers, what's really being activated? Grab your forearm, wiggle your fingers even a little bit. You're gonna notice which muscles are being used. It's in the forearm. So we wanna make sure our forearm is not stuck like this that's super important but even more important this is even less obvious is that a lot of times um, the way we hold our instrument can affect how our entire arm is impacting the hand so one common culprit is the pectoral minor uh, it's a muscle right here close to the armpit um, it can indirectly affect our left hand and make us squeeze without realizing it this was for me especially common when I would do vibrato and I realized that's why I had trouble doing vibrato when I would get nervous is I would squeeze over here and not realize how much it's affecting my uh, left hand technique. And this is, when I discovered this, it, I was pretty mind blown, you know, why didn't I realize this sooner? It would have been such helpful information. So one great exercise for this is to, first of all, practice swinging your arm. Um, like this and also across and we'll do this also with now with our instrument you don't need your bow for this 
So when we're holding the instrument, we want to be able to swing our arm this way and also comfortably go up and down this way when we shift up and actually when we glide up and down like this, uh, notice that if we, the instrument angle does not change, what happens, the elbow actually gets lower. And if the elbow has to get lower down, if you don't believe me, you can use a flat surface to see what happens. If you put a flat surface here and shift upward, the elbow has nowhere to go and causes the instrument to go up. So when we shift up, the elbow does come lower. And the, what allows that to happen is here. It comes from the shoulder, right? All of this moves together. Um, if you have trouble doing this, um, unless you have a medical reason, it may be time to reconsider your setup. So I'm not going to get into setup things in this video because then it'll just last another hour, but I will recommend a video up here and in the description below if you have a feeling that's what might be secretly causing you tension. So you can go check that out. And now as promised, I'll give you a quick bonus tip for playing double stops with more ease. And this is personally where I tend to find myself in a bit of trouble when it comes to tension, particularly in the thumb. Because of course, when we play double stops, unless we're playing fifths, we are putting more than one finger down at a time. So that's where we especially need to be mindful of how we're putting the fingers down and how much pressure we're using. And I know many of you expressed that the same struggle. So I'm just gonna give you a tip that's been helpful for me. And that is, to only focus on one of the two fingers as the leader. Usually that finger would be whichever finger is higher. So for example, if I am playing thirds, um, three and one, first fingers three and one or two and four, that third finger would be the leader and it would give a little bit more finger pressure than the first finger. Same way with the fourth and second finger, the weight distribution will um, favor the higher finger. So let's say we're playing thirds and I'll play. I want to find a way to uh, make my first finger even lighter. I'll kind of anchor all the weight on the third finger and the first finger will just kind of be very passive. It'll just kind of tag along. Then same thing for the next one. The second finger right now has much less finger pressure than the fourth finger. And that's super helpful because a lot of times I notice for myself, um, because, you know, we tend to focus a lot on intonation when we play. And when we shift, our first finger kind of identifies, oh, what position we're in and um, what pitch we're kind of um, aiming for. So what happens a lot is that the first finger sometimes starts to squeeze too much and that causes a lot of that thumb tension in double stops. This is especially true with octaves because we focus on the lower note a little bit more for intonation, but we need to figure out a way to still focus on that first finger pitch, but uh, the first finger will actually be a little bit lighter with the weight. and so on. You see, so what I did right now is I was listening more for the lower pitch, but uh, physically I anchored my hand so that the fourth finger was kind of more grounded and the first finger was a little bit lighter. Okay, if you're still here, um, okay, I'll give you one more tip. And that is to focus on the inner corner of our finger. When we put our fingers down normally, the idea is that the inner corner of the finger, so let's say with the first finger, it'll be the corner closer to the thumb. It's gonna aim for the fingerboard to the left of whatever string we're putting the finger on. So let's say I'm putting the first finger on the note E on the D string. I'm going to aim that corner towards the fingerboard in between. So on the left of the D string right here. So that's gonna give me a pretty good angle and it's going to prevent squeezing this way too much. So it's gonna actually still give me that pure tone and it's gonna allow the finger to be able to quickly uh, lift and release. And as a bonus, um, it'll allow clearance on the higher strings more easily. I talked about this in my video of how to create a finger tunnel. So if I focus on the same idea in a scale and really kind of pay attention to that inner corner and aim to the left side of the string with it. 
So I'll show you the difference actually. So this versus, so if I go like this, if I kind of aim uh, the middle of the finger pad onto the string right in the center, I'm actually pressing a little bit harder than I should without realizing it. But if I focus on that inner corner, it first of all, it re-angles the finger and it's actually pressing a little bit less, but I'm actually still getting a pure tone. This is something you can try out for yourself and experiment with. This is an idea that uh, I really got very curious about, and I think it's definitely worth considering. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please share it with a friend or a colleague and let me know your biggest takeaway in the comment section below. If you have not already done so yet, go ahead and grab your free practice template PDF in the description below. Upon doing so, you will be getting access to my latest blogs and videos twice a month and the ability to reach me directly. Till next time, happy practicing.